welcome to Wide Awake News. It's Friday night, April 25th, 2014. I'm your host, Christina Consolo. And last month, we talked about whether or not Fukushima is really an ELE, which can be found on the Wide Awake News archives, on my YouTube channel, Radchick, or at my website, Climate Viewer News. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the difference between Chernobyl and Fukushima in terms of the corium, or melted nuclear fuel, in each accident. And how we know that the U.S. government and possibly other world governments know exactly where this corium is. In fact, I'm going to give you 11 reasons why. Now, tomorrow just happens to be the anniversary of the Chernobyl accident, which is kind of funny because last month when I hosted this show, it was the anniversary of the Three Mile Island accident. Now, because of this anniversary and because of the current unrest that is happening in the Ukraine, we're probably going to be hearing a lot over the next few days. And in fact, articles started coming out um, earlier in the week about Chernobyl, the sarcophagus, how the unrest may stall the project of replacing the sarcophagus, which is falling apart over the Chernobyl reactor. And today, Washington Post came out with an interesting write-up on the nuclear core has finally been found scattered all over Japan. We reported in May of 2011 that authorities knew within days or weeks that all three active Fukushima nuclear reactors had melted down but covered up that fact for months. The next month, we reported that Fukushima's reactors had actually suffered something much worse, nuclear melt-throughs, where the nuclear fuel melted through the containment vessels and into the ground, and at the time, this was described as the worst possibility in a nuclear accident. But now, it turns out that some of the Fukushima reactors have suffered even a more extreme type of damage, melt-outs. By way of background, we've noticed periodically that scientists seem to have no idea where the cores of the nuclear reactors are. That is complete BS. All that highly radioactive black dirt that's been found all over Japan, well, it turns out that the highly radioactive black substances are likely remnants of the core. The journals Environmental Science and Technology and the Journal of Environmental Radioactivity both found that the highly radioactive black substances match fuel from the core of the Fukushima reactors. The USNRC agrees. Indeed, hot particles with extremely high levels of radiation, 7 billion, 40 billion, and even 40 billion billion becquerels per kilogram have been found all over the Fukushima region and even hundreds of miles away in Tokyo and farther. To put this in perspective, the Atlantic notes, Japanese regulations require nuclear waste with 100 or more becquerels per kilogram of cesium to be monitored and disposed of in specialized containers. The new government limit for material headed for landfills is 8,000 becquerels per kilogram, which is 80 times the pre-Fukushima designation. So the hottest hot particle found so far is 5 million billion times greater than the current government limits of what can be put in a landfill. And here, who, who knew that all this math that we were told that we needed our whole life would really come in handy now. In other words, the core of at least one of the Fukushima reactors has finally been found scattered all over Japan. How did material from the cores get dispersed so far? Remember, there was a huge explosion at Reactor 1 and an even bigger explosion at Reactor 3. And, of course, there were explosions at 1 and 4, too. Some comments under this uh, post from Washington's blog today. This is how news suppression happens. At the time when people need to know what's going on, the news media was silent. Then over time, bits and pieces are filtered out quietly. What can be done? Very little. The die is cast. They've waited too long to act at Fukushima to accomplish anything of value in stopping the flow of radiation to the environment. 
let me put the amount of radiation that we are talking about in perspective. The Hiroshima bomb, bomb in 1945 released less than 50 pounds of nuclear material into the environment. Fukushima Daiichi has thus far released at least 2 million pounds and may have already released a portion of the 10,000 plus pounds additional on site. That means that this single accident has already released more nuclear material to the environment than all of the nuclear bombs ever exploded combined. The black substance not only contaminated Japan, it came from explosions of the core material. One was highly publicized when the number three reactor blew on March 14th. They tried to say it was hydrogen, but since they have recently removed the debris, it has become obvious that it was a core breach, although they are still trying to cover up that too. That was from a poster named James. Another poster named Big 400 says, I always knew that governments lie to keep their population pacified and in line, but the level of suppression about the Fukushima radiation hitting our West Coast and contaminating our seafood of the U.S. is remarkable. Mainstream news in the West doesn't even cover this. I watched some info from a YouTube channel with Catherine Hamnett, the famous fashion designer who is an anti-nuclear campaigner. Thanks for the links to the filtered water. Zeolite is important, and we don't make we need to not make people feel powerless and inform them of what they can do. We don't need nuclear or oil or fracking, which all pollute and destroy. We need more solar and wind energy. Now, there's been a lot of comparisons made between the Chernobyl accident and Fukushima, and the big difference is, of course, that Chernobyl was somewhat mitigated and managed by digging underneath the reactor, the one reactor, and also by putting a big expensive cover over the top of it, which is the one that's falling apart now, which they are building a new one to put over the top of it, kind of like Russian nesting dolls. And people comment all the time, how come Russia isn't worried about this accident? But actually, some of the best information that we've come across has come from Russian scientists, and they are monitoring the ocean for when the highly radioactive water makes a return trip after hitting the West Coast. Now, this article appeared in The Voice of Russia, April 19th. A manager of the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant, Akira Ono, has admitted that the nuclear disaster handlers are not in full control of the cleanup process Ono's announcement added to the incessant concerns that the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, has been failing to tackle the numerous problems at the station. Last week, the plant saw another blunder when 203 tons of highly contaminated water were pumped into the wrong building. The Voice of Russia asked Joseph Mangano, epidemiologist and executive director of Radiation and Public Health Project Research Group, about the risks from Fukushima fallout. And this is a great interview, but there's only really a couple of things that I want to share with you, and you can find this again on the Voice of Russia website. They asked Joe Mangano what he made of this statement coming from Akira Ono, and his response was, that is the new part that the truth is starting to come out. But people have known from the beginning that this was not only a huge disaster, but it was never brought under control compared to Chernobyl, which was the other major nuclear accident. That one was buried and put under a sarcophagus within several months. This is different. This is over three years later. Radiation still leaking into the air and still leaking into the Pacific, and not in small amounts, but in very, very large amounts. We've been hearing about how bad this is and how this is getting into the Pacific Ocean and how it's going to contaminate the oceans and fish, the risk to residents and people who actually don't even live near the disaster site. So he was asked the question that really seems to be pertinent because we hear a lot about this and we hear the international community saying that is being poorly handled, but no one else has really gotten involved. What more could have been done? And his answer was, that's a great question. I honestly don't have an answer. Maybe TEPCO and the Japanese government have done all they could. I think the key point here is that the nuclear reactors are capable of terrible disasters such as this, which may not be controlled ever. And the real unfortunate part is that people suffer, people get sick, people die when they're exposed to these very dangerous chemicals. Joe Mangano was also asked about data that his organization has published They've published four studies 
And he states that in the U.S. it's very hard to get good data from Japan. And we talked about that with our last show, Is Fukushima Really an ELE? And how many lapses in information that have occurred prevent us from really adequately determining that. They've tested thyroid glands, which are very sensitive to radiation, in about 250,000 local children. So far, the two things they found is that 46%, nearly half of these children, have, have either cysts or another type of growth on their thyroid gland. Not cancerous, but precancerous. And they've also found 75%, 75 children with thyroid cancer, which is very, very rare. And in fact, four years after the Chernobyl accident, the World Health Organization was freaking out because there were 100 kids with thyroid cancer in Belarus and in surrounding areas of the Chernobyl accident. And we've already had 75 within the first couple of years of, of this accident. And, you know, we're not even testing kids in the U.S. and Canada. Has everything been ruled out? Is this definitely linked to Fukushima? And his answer was, of course. We'll have to look at other potential factors, such as medical care and poverty, but these things don't change in the short term. These things don't change nine months before and then nine months after an accident. But there was one big change, the arrival of substantial amounts of fallout from Japan. And you know that infants are much more sensitive to radiation than adults. Studying infants is just the beginning. If infants may have been harmed, that means adults may have been harmed. The disease does not show up very fast. Sometimes it takes years or even decades. And in 2009, a book by the Russian scientist led by Alexei Yablokov estimated that in the first 20 years after Chernobyl, there were 1 million deaths and the number is still going up. This is what's going to happen in the case of Fukushima. But one thing that um, Joe Mangano left out of this interview is that shortly after the accident, Christopher Busby, another very well-known radiation researcher and scientist who's actually a, a chemist, has a, has a doctorate in chemistry and radiochemistry, stated that air filters that he tested in the Tokyo area were 300 times the levels of what we're seeing after Fukushima. And that's actually kind of a low number when you look at some of the other releases because Chernobyl didn't sit on an ocean. It had an aquifer underneath and it had a water source nearby, but it didn't sit on a major ocean body. So scientists in Japan have estimated that the releases to the ocean from the Fukushima accident are at least 10,000 times worse in the case of Fukushima compared to Chernobyl. Mangano also stated the differences with Chernobyl were, number one, there was only one reactor that melted down. In Japan, there were three. Number two, Chernobyl was a new plant and it only operated for two or three years before the accident. In Fukushima, these reactors had been operating for over 30 years, and the high-level waste that was affected by the meltdown was enormous. There's lots of other differences. Again, Chernobyl was buried within two or three months. In this case, it's three years later, and it's still not under control. The emissions are continuing, and eventually they are going across the world.